there is still quite a bit of controversy regarding what is the optimal diet for cardiovascular health. So some major scholars in the field came together for a three-day consensus conference. They have now created an in-depth review of current knowledge on the role of diet in CVD. And you can check out the paper in the October 6th issue of Jack. Right now, the state-of-the-art paper's author is here with me, uh, Dr. Salem Yusuf, who is a professor of medicine and also the director of the Population Health Research Institute at McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario. And this is a report from a workshop convened by the World Heart Federation, and you're the president currently, correct? That's right. I'm the president currently, yeah. So what was the impetus, first off, for this three-day conference? As you know, uh, Rick, every week there's a new recommendation on diet that yes, comes exactly. out. exactly. And, uh, and the field is evolving. It's just because it's a very dynamic and difficult area. So we felt it was appropriate to bring some of the world's experts together to review the most recent evidence and rather than react on a paper by paper basis to pull it all together and get an overview. So we developed a workshop with some of the best people and it was, uh, the workshop was developed by Walter Willett and Barry Popkin and myself and uh, it was under the umbrella of the World Heart Federation as a global organization. And our goals was to look at the effects of diets globally. And the reason for this is dietary recommendations in one part of the world may or may not be applicable to another part of the world, True. given how different diets are uh, in, in different parts of the world. You know, what you eat is different, how they cooked is different, how you, how you eat it, with or without family, restaurants, fast foods versus home in front of a TV, all these things are different. Another key thing is whenever we talk about diet is we have to talk about the food supply. Well, yeah. what, what are the policies that lead to uh, affordable and accessible foods? So we tied all this together in this workshop and that's what it was about. So what are some of the highlights? What are the things that you think clinicians might need to know from this particular three-day event? Well, there were several issues discussed. The first one was it was difficult to come to conclusion what is the best diet uniformly across the world because they're so variable. But we narrowed it down to a few common principles and the Mediterranean type diet seemed to be the one that had the best evidence, um, which is a diet of moderation. Right. It isn't a diet of extreme. The other part of it is a Mediterranean diet is a very enjoyable diet. It truly is. Yes. And in fact, I, I hate actually calling it a diet because it's a lifestyle. I mean, exactly. it's, it's, it's a it, lifestyle. It's a menu. It's a menu. It's what you eat, how you eat, how you cook it. And uh, that's what we focused on. We also got away from the concept of saying so many percent, so many, so much of your energy comes from percent fat because nobody has a clue what that means. So we just talked about you know, food items, food patterns. Right. The other one is we dealt with salt and we felt there clearly was evidence that high salt was bad, but there was also concerns that low, pushing salt consumption too low may not be the right recommendations. And so we suggested a middle ground. Uh, there's no doubt fruits and vegetables are helpful. It's likely that fish is neutral a moderate amount of meat is fine, too much may not be good. And so it was a moderate, moderate, moderation approach. What about sugar? Well, In this uh, country particularly, we yeah, get a lot sugar of Sugar is obviously now uh, a matter of great concern. And our, um, uh, our, our meeting did say be moderate about it. And carbohydrates too, the emerging data suggests it is something that we need to be careful about. But the bottom line of the meeting was a moderate diet using a Mediterranean pattern, moderation in salt. You know, you don't have to put it down to your boots, but, but you do need to be careful, especially if you're hypertensive. Right. But the other part of it was in order to promote healthy diets, consumptions, we needed not only to educate people, but we need to make healthy foods available and affordable, and that, that requires governmental policies in agriculture and in pricing. I mean, you've got the paper in, Jack. After sitting around for three days, what are the gaps? 
What is that we well, still huge, don't know that we should know? There are huge gaps in, in knowledge and diet, and this is one of the uh, most challenging areas of research. Uh, first, diet's information we need from different parts of the world because they're so varied. And we need large studies in each part of the world assessing the effects of diets on health, not just cardiovascular. The second thing is a realization that, you know, uh, the marked differences in how people prepare their meals and cook their meals. And so even if you say I'm eating a lot of fruits and vegetables, it needn't be the same thing else in different parts of the world. The third is, you know, what is in a fruit or what is in a vegetable may vary depending on the soil uh, conditions, the insecticides and pesticides added, and storage conditions. And in some countries, they add various artificial chemicals to keep the foods looking good. And that may or may not have a, 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 a negative effect. So I, I think overall, diet is incredibly complicated. So uh, the main thing was we needed better data from different parts of the world. But at least of the data that we do have right now, one of the best places to find it is right here in this October 6th issue of Jack, where oh, we've got absolutely. this paper. Because you did, you, you got some really great people to come yeah. together and to talk about what are the issues right now. It, it is a very useful uh, summary of where we stand on diet globally and what would be heart health. And it's a sort of balanced recommendation and it's a recommendation which doctors and other health professionals can use in counseling their patients. Well, this is the state of the art paper and it is in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology. It is the October 6th issue. So please check that out for Cardiosource World News. I'm executive editor Rick McGuire.